أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين البشير النذير رحمة الله للعالمين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, this is the first uh, introductory presentation. And in this presentation, insha'Allah, we, I will clarify things that have to be clarified so that the next time around, when we meet via this medium, uh, we will plunge into the subjects that uh, hopefully will help all of us in the current day affairs and predicament that we are all part of and subject to. Um, in the first instance, I would like to express my thanks and appreciation for the effort and the time that you will spend with me in this journey. I hope this is going to be a journey of many weeks and months and probably years into the future if Allah gives us the wherewithal and the patience to endure. Um, I foresee that we will uh, put into motion a series of presentations uh, and these series of presentations will uh, in the most part hopefully depend on your comments and your feedback. Uh, the Muslim world, the Muslims themselves in our current affairs and in our contemporary times, the Muslims are going through some very uh, challenging, in some instances threatening uh, circumstances and developments. Um, and what I have realized throughout the years, and our lifetime is limited, but throughout these years, I've realized that one of the drawbacks that we Muslims suffer from is our inability, uh, reluctance, or even objection to thinking through the guidance and the light that has come to all, us from Allah Jalla wa'ala. This incapacity to think through the information that has been revealed uh, to our beloved Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, has placed, at, placed us at a very serious disadvantage uh, whereby we cannot respond to those who accuse us of certain things, those who present Islam for us and we're supposed to, th we're supposed to accept what they tell us. Many of them are, have no good intentions toward us. And uh, then we have inside of our own house of Islam, we have many Islamic speakers who themselves are reluctant or averse to speaking out on issues that everyone speaks about, but when it comes to Muslims, we're supposed to be silent about. So there is a range of issues. Some of them are theological issues. Others are ideological issues. And then we have what may be called political issues and economic issues and military issues and a whole assortment of other issues that 
it's almost, it's not a law that says we are prohibited from discussing these issues, but it's sort of uh, a, uh, a type of silent understanding among ourselves that it is not right or it is not timely or it is not appropriate or it is not diplomatic to uh, open up these files that everyone speaks about and everyone comments on but we the Muslims who have this book of guidance from Allah and we have this history of guidance of his prophet and we're supposed to say no we're not going to speak about these issues no it's about time now that we begin to speak about these issues with an enlightened islamic mind and a pulsating islamic heart the time has come to do this now this is what i hope we will do and i hope this is not going to be a one-way conversation uh, I'm expecting to hear from you, um, your comments, your suggestions, your critique, uh, any information that you have that you want to pass along to me, please, by all means, don't feel restricted and don't feel inhibited. Uh, that's the way we can improve this two-way communication. So now we come to the issues that we are going to try to go through with thinking minds. I have to underline the, work, the word thinking minds. We don't want to go through this automatically. We don't want to go through this as if we are hypnotized. We don't want to go through this absent-mindedly. We want to go through this together with the mind that combines information that comes to us from Allah with the information that is developing in our practical and real world. So these subjects are an array of subjects. They've been off limits to the Muslim speakers for a long time, at least the overwhelming majority of them. And so we're going to try to open up these subjects with their multiple files and dwell on them so that you will begin, and I think this will be a success, if you begin to think of the ayat of Allah and of the teachings and instructions of His Messenger. Both are compatible with each other. None of them are in conflict with each other. So don't be um, scared if we're going to speak about current events with an Islamic heart and mind. Uh, don't be uh, frigid if we are going to heat up the discussion of some of the issues that seem to be uh, issues uh, that are left only to the scholarly class. And I, I wish we had enough of this scholarly class that had the courage to divulge this issue to you and me and the general Islamic public. Um, and then we have the issue of the time frame that I will be speaking to you in. Is, are we gonna, uh, do you want this to be a half hour, 30 minutes? Uh, which I think is good for a beginning. We can begin the first, I don't know, five, ten or, five or ten presentations at around half an hour. I think that's fair enough. To begin with, we can expand that as we grow um, and as we delve further into uh, some areas that may need a little more time for explanation and elucidation. Uh, so I'm suggesting half an hour, 
uh, for each presentation. Uh, and then the, that's the duration of the presentation. The frequency of it, I'm also suggesting that we begin once a week. Now this may change in the future. We can increase, we can decrease, we can go for once every two weeks or twice a week. And a lot of that also depends on how involved you are, how much more you want to listen to what is being said. In other words, how this appeals to you, these presentations appeal to you in general. So it's very important for me to, to hear from you on this. Uh, another thing that has to be taken in con into consideration is uh, I probably speaking to a local audience, viewership, in, in my uh, time zone, I'm here in the Washington DC area, which means I'm on Eastern Standard Time, uh, USA time. Uh, and so in the United States, there's a, in the continental United States, th there's a three hour span. So those of you who are living in t different time zones, you have to calculate um, what, let's say, 12 o'clock at noon, what that would be in, in your time zone. But then there's also a global viewership, I anticipate, some people who are in different parts of Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, etc. They would also have to calculate the time difference between where they are and between, between where I am. Now, I don't, I, I'm trying to have this as convenient as possible for everyone, but when we're looking at the whole world with all of its time zones, obviously it's not going to be very easy for me to give a presentation that everyone can tune into at the time of the presentation, which means that we may have to record and obviously this is going to be recorded and then you can tune in uh, to the recording instead of to the um, live um, viewership of it. So uh, that's another consideration. Uh, another, another uh, I think, aspect of all of this is exactly what time every week should we be um, broadcasting and you would be viewing or listening to this. I'm suggesting, and I'm not here to impose on anyone, this is not a dictatorship, but I'm suggest suggesting because we are living in this COVID-19, the coronavirus restrictions and lockdowns and all, all of these um, uh, type of restraints that we have, I'm suggesting that during the time of Jumu'ah Khutbah, the Jumu'ah Khutbah, uh, Friday at noon time, which in my area and my time frame would be around 1.30. Uh, now 1.30 my time would be, I think, 6.30 Greenwich Mean Time, or it would be 8.30 in the time of Al-Quds and Mecca and al Medina, And you can, you can figure out from there what time it would be wherever you are. And so we can, I can you know, present my ideas and thoughts for a half hour. So if we begin at 1.30, we will end at 2 o'clock, my time. And then after that, I don't know, we'll see if there's the... Uh, technical potential of uh, fielding some comments and some inquiries that you may have. I don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll, we'll try to see what we can do in that regard. And um, uh, that being said, I want to emphasize and reiterate that much of the progress of the program that I have in mind depends on your feedback. What you are most interested in, you can, you can send in a barrage of questions or comments. 
uh, feel free to do so uh, anytime. And I will seriously take a look at them with the time constrictions that I have, but I assure you, I will take the necessary time out to go over whatever feedback I get. And if most of you express a concern in a certain area, as I said, there are many topics. There are historical issues, there are fiqhi issues, there are theological issues, there are philosophical issues, there are issues of contemporary affairs, the current developments of the world today. Um, and all of these come under the guidance of Allah and His Prophet. So if I sense that there are many of you who want me to concentrate on a certain area, I will be at your service and concentrate on that certain area. Uh, I think um, saying what I just said, and then there's the issue of language. I will try, it because I get this criticism from here and there sometimes, that sometimes I use words that are not familiar, they're not spoken, they're not used every day, and so some person says, oh, I'm going to have to go to the dictionary, figure out what he said. I'll try to avoid those types of words. Uh, I'm human. You know, sometimes I may use some word that is not uh, frequently used, uh, so you're going to have to you know, forgive me if that slips and I do something like that. And uh, but I'll try to do that, and then the uh, try to do the avoidance of dictionary uh, words, uh, words that is, are going to force you to go to the dictionary. Uh, and then there's another aspect to this. I don't know the linguistic makeup of the those who are tuning in. Uh, and so if there's a demand out there for me to give a presentation in Arabic, I will certainly do that, but much of that depends on how many uh, demand that, how many maybe can't understand the subject matter thoroughly enough in English, so they want me maybe to express it in Arabic, I, I can do that. But once again, that depends on how many. I, I can't do this for just a few individuals. There has to be something like an audience, a numerical mass out there that wants something like that. And once again, I will be at your service and try to present my ideas in the Arabic language. There's also something else that happens because we are all human. وَخُلِقَ uh, الْإِنسَانُ وَعَجُولَ uh, you know, social beings, we social beings are in a haste many times uh, to do things and to say things. So in, in my human nature and its haste to express things, uh, sometimes I'll quote an ayah and then I will skip the translation of the ayah. I will quote the ayah in Arabic and then I will skip the translation of the ayah. I'm, I don't try to do this deliberately, but in some instances it happens because I am in a rush to explain the meaning of the ayah or the meanings of the ayah, and I overlook the immediate translation of it. So anytime that happens, I stand to be adjusted and I will go back and um, try to explain as best as I can the uh, translation or the general meanings of any quoted ayah or even hadith, both of them. These are necessary, the ayahs and the hadiths. So I think uh, with that, Gen with these general remarks, I'm setting the ground and preparing the atmospherics for our weekly encounter and obviously success and, um, uh, and the eventual uh, communication of ideas is a matter of Allah's tawfiq 
matter of Allah's um, offering us the um, the success that is necessary for either the expression of the idea or the conclusion of the program. So we ask Allah this tawfiq in our uh, verbalization of the ideas and in the overall uh, presentation of the program from beginning to end, whether it's the individual program or whether it's the sequence of programs uh, that will extend into the future that is determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَقُولُ لَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Do not say that you are going to do a certain thing tomorrow or in the future except that Allah wills it. And in Allah we place our trust and in Allah is our total confidence. وعلى الله فليتوكل المتوكلون وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آل محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته